Good morning, everybody. This is Donald Blondahl, Hall of Fame veteran, sports cards and collectibles, coming to you live from Arlington, Washington, with this Wednesday edition. But first off, I'd like to start out with Happy St. Patty's Day. Make sure you're wearing green. Make sure you're wearing green or have green somewhere around near you. Because if you don't wear green, you're going to get pinched. <laughs> Bibster says, Good Wednesday, everybody. One, two, three, four for the Bibster. Four for the Bibster. All right. We've got four for the Bibster. Actually, not four. Boom. There we go. Bibster's chimed right in here at 10 o'clock. We'll see who else gets in before the the first one that is in at 10.01 ends the free entries into the monthly drawing. So we've got the Bipster. One, two, three. Three for the Bipster. Uh, one for Michael Heath so far. Put you on here, Michael H. I know who that is. And it looks like who's gonna who's gonna chat next to finish up the freebies here. The freebies. Nobody else. Nobody else. We got three people watching. Five thumbs up. Then I'll get into our intros so we know what we're gonna do today. Tornadoes here today, says Pipster. And he rounds it off with entry number four. So four entry for the four entries for the Bipster. And one for Michael Michael Heath. So let me get your entries into the wheel of names here. Four for the Bipster. Alright. Four for the Bipster. Let me get down here. Get the Bibster in here. Okay. Da, da, da. Sorry. Get ready here. All right. Get these four in there for Bibster. Get him right off. The, be the beaten drag here, and then for Michael Heath. Let's put that over just a little bit there. Put my note away. Michael Heath. All right, get this saved. First in the live stream uh, at Mixed Heel. Just tied the garbage cans to <laughs> just tied the garbage cans to the house. There we go. That's right. You don't want things to be disappearing during the day when the when the when the tornado comes through. Hopefully you don't get it too bad there, Bipster. We'll be praying for you, that's for sure, that it won't be as bad as maybe they're predicting. But I've got Bipster, of all things, Wax Pack, and Michael Heath into the drawing. So we have three different parts to our stream today. We're going to start out with the Devil Edge Art Card Series uh, right here. Um, series 1, Hall of Famers. This is set number 741 out of 10,000 10, sorry, uh, numbered sets depicting Hall of Famers from 1936 to 1946, each illustrated with an original oil painting by noted artist Ron Lewis. This is, um, again, original oil paintings by Ron Lewis, and it's produced by in 1984 by Renata Glasso Incorporated. In case you're wondering, to give you the information on the little mini 44 card set 
that we're going to go over today. All right. And then uh, part two of the stream, we will do the Bipster box in our normal fashion. I know I have it listed. I should have did the Bipster box first and then left behind time series. But I did get another family mail call package yesterday from Left Behind. And you can see down here I've got the preview of when he sent me my my Series 1 box. The only hint he gave me about this one was Series 2. So we're looking forward. The box is right over here on the to the right of me here. And that will uh, that will tell us well when I open the box we'll see what kind of Series 2 he sent to me. For those that do remember back last year when he gave, when he sent me Series 1, he had a few little goodies in there and stuff. And then he had this, this uh, repacked box. Oh my word, I just dropped all my notes out there. I pre previewed this a little bit earlier, but uh, then I just messed up my little display here. That's what I get for turning it upside down and trying to flip it without holding the lid closed. <laughs> but this was the, the Blomball Cards box, uh, reimagined. Uh, he kind of put different ones here. He knows I like Ichiro, Cal Ripken Jr., Ken Griffey Jr., my two main PCs. I'd say Ichiro, between each no, Ichiro, probably next. And then uh, the next one after that is... Uh, the new pitcher from Japan for the Mariners. I'm having a senior moment. But anyway, <laughs> he did redesign this box for sure. I'll show you the, the different sides here. The back here. He's got a Cal Ripken Diamond King there. Uh, Cal Ripken with the Orioles here. Ken Griffey Jr. find an autograph. <laughs> that was kind of cute. He did give me an autograph. It's hanging on my wall over here. You can see my hand pointing to it. That's a hand autograph. Cal Ripken Jr. that he presented to me. It was in the box, same family mail call box that this came in. So I'm going to set this aside for now. Let me set it way over here. All right. Out of the way for sure. Okay. So until the... Actually, no. I'll leave it down here for now to kind of remind us that that series two will become upcoming no i gotta move it out of the way what am i thinking i have some other things i have to do here but we do have a couple of minutes here left so that is the lineup for today we're going to go through this 44 card set there's uh, information on the back of each card so i will be touching base with you on that and reading uh, most of the backs we'll see how things go I don't want to go too long. I do have an errand to run right after lunch this afternoon. But other than, no, not, well, Kyle Lewis is there. Um, you say Kikuchi. You say Kikuchi. It just popped in. Bipster said Kyle Lewis, yes. Uh, for some recent players, Kyle Lewis was my recent one. The one before him on the Seattle Mariners is you say Kikuchi. You say Kikuchi. I say Kikuchi. 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 Kikuchi, but you say Kikuchi, which uh, was a uh, it, it, uh, when you say Kikuchi was a young kid in Japan. He always admired and looked up to Ichiro as his protege, and before just before Ichiro retired, when they were playing in Japan, when Ichiro announced his retirement. Um, in that uh, game that they played in Japan, Yusei Kikuchi got to play in a game with Ichiro, which was uh, very amazing there. So we do got about one more minute, and then we'll get into our set here. I think I hit the box there and kind of disturbed my stack here a little bit. But we will go through each of these here one by one starting with card number one and going through card number 44 as soon as it does say 1010 i will take off this uh, the other side of this card is the checklist let me do that real quick before we do uncover it here so this is the checklist of the hall of famers that are in here ty cub Ty Cobb, Babe Ruth, Walter Johnson, Christy Mathewson, Honus Wagner, Napoleon LaHoy, Trish Speaker, Cy Young, Morgan 
vocally, uh, Van Johnson, John McGraw, Connie Mack, George Wright, Grover Alexander, Alexander Cartwright, Henry Chadwick, Eddie Collins, Lou Gehrig, Willie Keeler, George Sisler, Cap Batson, Charles Kaminsky, Candy Cummings, Buck Ewing, Charlie Radburn, A.J. Spaulding, or A.G. Spaulding, Roger Hornsby, Judge Landris, uh, Roger Britt Bresh Breshnahan, uh, Dan Brothers, Fred Clark, Jimmy Collins, Ed Delane, Delante, Hugh Duffy, Hughie Jennings, Mike King Kelly, Jim O'Rourke, Wilbert Robertson, uh, Jesse Burkett, Frank Chance, Jack Cheesebro, Johnny Evers, Joe Tinker, and Eddie Plank. So that is our Hall of Famers that are listed in here. And we will go through these one by one. And I will show you the card here. And then we'll read what's on the back of these cards on this mini set. Oh, sorry. Knocked something over. Down by my foot here. All right. So let's go into card number one, Tris Speaker. Tris Speaker. Tris Speaker. What am I saying? That's Ty Cobb. <laughs> Ty Cobb. 1936. I believe is uh, when he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. I'm pretty sure that's what they put have on the back here. He was an outfielder, born December 18, 1886, died July 17, 1961. He uh, batted left, threw right. His height was 6'1", and his weight was 175. Considered by many to be the greatest competitor of all time, Ty broke in with the Detroit Tigers in 1905. In the next 21 full seasons, he would hit at least uh, 320, all with Detroit, but the last two with Philadelphia Athletics. His lifetime batting average, 367, will never be surpassed. He won 12 batting titles, a major league record, and hit over 400 three times when he retired in 1928. He held more records than any other player, including 892 stolen bases. So there we have it. Ty Cobb is the first card. I probably should have did it the other way and just read the back and then showed you what the card looked like but I already got it set up this way so we'll go we'll go with it next of course we've got Babe Ruth here is our next Hall of Famer that we're gonna highlight from this set okay Babe Ruth don't mind me I'll get this all figured out before we're done <laughs> All right, Babe Ruth, 1936, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. He was an outfielder, born February 6th, 1895, died August 16th, 1948. Uh, he batted left, threw left, was six foot two and weighed 215 pounds. The greatest draw in baseball history, the Babe Ruth broke in with the Red Sox as a pitcher in 1915 where he won 65 games in his first three seasons. However, his great hitting ability saw the Babe move to the outfield where he established all-time home run records that would stand for decades. He was sold to the Yankees in 1920 where he hit 54 homers, um, 59 in 1921, and 60 in 1927. He concluded his career in 1935 with the Boston Brewers. There we go. We have Kevin's card collecting in the house. Um, good morning, Kevin. And then uh, the Hughie Jennings was deaf. He came up with the baseball signals for coaches. Hipster of all things, wax pack saying greetings, Kevin. All right, let me uh, make sure I refresh my chat so I know where I left off. Try and check that between each player as we highlight them. Next up to bat is Walter Johnson. Walter Johnson. Awesome looking card there for Walter Johnson. 
All right. Also a 1936 inductee, he was a pitcher, born November 6, 1887, died December 10, 1946. Bats right, throws right, height six foot one. Boy, they were tall baseball players back in the day. <laughs> Weighing in at 200, nicknamed the Big Train because of his explosive fastball, Walter broke in with the Washington Senators in 1907 with no minor league experience. His 414 victories ranks second only to Cy Young, and his 113 career shutouts is a record that may never be equaled. For more than 50 years, he was the only pitcher with more than 3,000 strikeouts. Beginning in 1910, Walter had 10 successive 20-win seasons, including 16 in a row in 1912 and a fantastic 36-7 record in 1913. So there we, ho there we go, Walter Johnson, card number three. So next is card number four. Up to bat is Honus Wagner back in the day. Try and bring this up a little bit closer so you can see a little detailed look at it. But Honus Wagner. No. That's Christy Mathewson. Watch what you're doing, Bromdo. Christy Mathewson. We just did Walter Johnson. Sorry, Christy Mathewson. Oh, I'm having a good start to St. Patty's Day today. Uh, where's the luck of the Irish with me? I don't know these days. Okay, Christy Mathewson. Let's get this back on track. Chuck Dupree's in the house. Hey, you doing, Chuck? Hey, Michael. Michael Heath says, hi, Chuck. Again, 1936, as a pitcher, born August 12, 1880, died October 7, 1925. Bats right, throws right, again, six foot one, and weighing in at 205. Big six, as he was called, because of his impressive stature, broke in with the New York Giants in 1900. He was renowned for his fadeaway pitch and twirled three consecutive 30 victory campaigns in 1903 to 1905, which was capped off with three shutouts over the A's in the 1905 World Series. John McGraw and Connie Mack declared Matthewson to be the greatest pitcher who ever lived. He died at the age of 45 from lungs weakened by poison gas in World War II. Okay, so there we go. Card number four, Christy Mathewson. Now we've got Honus Wagner. This is Honus Wagner here. Card number five in the set. Honus Wagner. Again, a 1936 inductee. He was a Shortstop, born February 24, 1874. Uh, died December 6, 1955. Oh, he passed away just a about 12 days before my wife was born. I'm going to get yelled at again for saying how old my wife is. Because <laughs> uh, bats right, throws right. He was a shorter guy, shorter stature, 5'11", not quite 6 foot, but weighing in at 200. Considered to be the finest all-around shortstop to ever play the game. He was a sensational hitter, a superb, a superb base runner, and a peerless fielder. He hit 317 consecutive seasons and won eight batting titles, which is a National League record. Five times he led the senior circuit in RBIs and in doubles, eight times. He possessed deceptive speeding, leading the National League in stolen bases six seasons and finished with 720 stolen bases. He played 17 of his 20 big league seasons with the Pirates from 1900 to 1917 and continued as a coach for the Bucks 
after retiring. All right. So Honus Wagner was card number five. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Chuck. Hey, Michael. Hey, Chuck and Bipster. Hey, Michael. Hey, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Everybody's saying hello to everybody. We do a refresh. We've got five people watching and six thumbs up. Thummies up. Thummies up. Thummies up for me. You know what? I got this a little bit close down here. Let me scooch them up just a little bit here. All right. Moving on to card number six, Napoleon Lahoy. Napoleon Lahoy. Do a little bit of a close-up shot here of Napoleon here. All right. He is the first of our 1937 inductees. All right. In this series one, I got to try and find out if they have uh, the other series or if this ended up being the only one. So if anybody knows information about that, that would be awesome. But it just depends. Maybe some of the other ones are a little bit more expensive sets. I don't know for sure. But Napoleon La Jolla, 1937 inductee. He was a second baseman, born September 5th, 1875, and uh, died February 7th, 1959 which was, I wasn't even one year old late, uh, one year old yet. Got a, had a couple more months before my first birthday. Uh, bat, batted right, threw right, another tall one, six foot two, but he weighed in at 195. He was described as poetry in motion, who had few equals in the bat or in the field. He broke in with the Phillies in 1896, and in 1901 with the A's, won the Triple Crown, 10 seasons he batted 350, and led the American League in hitting three times. For most of his 21 years, he played with the Indians from 1902 to 1914, and finished with the A's in 1916. So there you go, Napoleon Lahoy is card or yeah card number six in the set and next we've had card numbers card number seven <clears throat> time for a sip of water first before we get into the reading of Tris speakers information here so let me get a quick sip of water here in my water bottle <laughs> Always refreshing, especially when my voice starts getting raspy. All right, let's continue on air. All right, so Tris Speaker, uh, inducted in 1937, was also an outfielder. Born April 4th, 1888, died December 8th. Wow. Oh, that's right, yeah. Never mind. I was only about five months old here. <laughs> it threw me off. I thought it was the same as the last card, and I was like, nope, nope. I thought maybe they had a, an error card here. <laughs> that would have been interesting. Uh, he batted left, threw left. He was six foot exactly, so so far we've only had one person under six foot. Uh, weighing in at 193. The Gray Eagle, as he was called, was one of the greatest players in baseball history playing with the Red Sox from 1909 to 1915 and Cleveland from 1916 to 1926. Speaker played in the shadow of Ty Cobb as he often finished second to Cobb in the batting race. In 1916, Speaker finally bested Cobb and won the batting title. He played the shallowest center field in baseball history and holds the record for assists and double plays for outfielders. His 793 doubles is a major league record. 
And he was card number seven, Tris Speaker. So next up to bat, we've got Cy Young. Cy Young, card number eight. So this is Cy Young here. Again, inducted in 1937. He is a pitcher, born March 29th. Uh, 1867, um, born March 29th, 1867, and then died on November 4th, 1955. He batted right, threw right, was six foot two, and weighed 210 pounds. Baseball's most durable pitcher. Uh, Cy pitched for 22 years with the Cleveland. Indians of the National and American League with the Red Sox. He is the only pitcher in baseball history to win 500 games and the first hurler to pitch no hitters in both major leagues and threw a perfect game on May 5th, 1904. He won 20 games 16 times and topped 30 wins in five seasons. Born uh, Denton True Young, he was nicknamed Cy, which was short for Cyclone. All right, card number eight, Cy Young. Next up to bat here, in card number nine is Morgan Buckley. Norman Buckley, my guess is, is he was an executive or a manager or owner. All right. He was inducted as in 1937 as an executive. Uh, born December 26, 1837, and died November 6, 1922. Morgan Buckley was a prime force in establishing a firm foundation on the organization of the National League in 1876. He was a successful businessman in the insurance and banking community and was a prominent figure in politics as he was mayor of Hartford from 1880 to 1889 and governor of Connecticut from 1889 to 1893 and a U.S. Senator from 1905 through 1911. He was the National League's first president, but resigned the office after one year due to business and political pressures. So card number nine was Morgan Buckley. Next up is card number 10, Ban Johnson. So Ban Johnson is next up to bat here. Ban Johnson. Inducted in 1937, was an executive. Born January 5, 1864, died March 28, 1931. Ban Johnson organized and was the first president of the American League. After graduating Mer Merida College in 1887, he became a baseball writer in Cincinnati. Johnson worked his way up to become president of the Western League in 1893 and changed the name to the American League in 1900. He won his American League's uh, president. He was the American League president from 1900 to 1927, and during his reign, he saw the junior circuit again with the National League. So that was the information on Ban Johnson. Next up will be card number 11. Uh, beautiful cards. How did you know about this great hard to find set? I don't know. Somebody from Southeast Operations uh, told me about it. So I, I, I searched around for it. No, I actually, he gave me the link for it. I looked at it and I was like, oh, that's a cool set. But thanks a lot, Bipster. Appreciate all your help. You are a blessing for sure. Okay. So next up to bat, of course, then is card number 11, John McGraw. So John McGraw is next up to bat here. John McGraw. 
Looked like he was with the Giants here back in the day. So John McGraw, 1937, was a manager born April 7th, 1873. Died February 25th, 1934. Possibly the greatest manager of all time. John McGraw piloted the New York Giants for 30 years and led the Giants to 10 pennants. He was nicknamed the Little Napoleon and was respected by the players and opposition. He developed the hit and run, but his greatest attribute was the ability to judge talent. The last game he ever managed was the National League in the first All-Star game in 1933. Um, he was with baseball from, for 33 years uh, uh, during the period of 1899 to 1932. Won 2000 840 games and lost 1,984 with a winning percentage of 0.589. So there you go, John McGraw, card number 11. Card number 12, next up to bat, is Connie Mack. Connie Mack is our next executive up to bat here, Connie Mack. He was actually a manager. In 1937, he was inducted, born December 23, 1862, died February 8, 1956. Born Cornelius McGillicuddy, Mac was a star catcher in the 1880s and 1890s. He was owner and manager of the Philadelphia A's, managing the team for 50 years. Under his leadership, the A's had two dynasties, 1910 to 1914, when the A's won four pennants, from uh, 1929 to 1931. Uh, he spent 53 years in the baseball world, from 1894 to 1950, he won 3,776 games, lost 4,025 games, and had a percentage of 484. So that was card number 12 out of 44. Next up to bat is George Wright. George Wright is next up to bat here. This is George White's close-up shot here. All right, George Wright, inducted in 1937, was a shortstop and an innovator. A shortstop and an innovator. Greetings there, FJ. Thanks for popping into the stream here. Hopefully you're on either, you're probably on lunch break or just a break. Thanks for popping into the stream and being with us today when you can. All right. He was born January 28, 1847. Died August 31st, 1937. Baseball's first superstar. George was the star player on baseball's first professional team. The 1869 Cincinnati Red Stockings. During the first season, he hit 49 home runs in 56 games for the Red Stockings, managed by Hall of Fame brother Harry Wright, a solid 300 hitter. George was a key player on four National League pennant winning teams from 1872 to 1875 at Boston. He later become, became player manager and led Providence to a National League pennant. So that was George Wright, card number 13. And next up on card number 14 is Grover Alexander. Grover Alexander. I call him another, another blue eye player. Kind of like Cal Ripken Jr. All right. Card number 14 here, Grover Allinger. 1938 inductee. He's the first 1938 inductee here. A 
Pitcher, he was born February 26, 1887, died November 4th, 1950. He batted right, threw right, his height was 6'1", and he weighed in at 185. All right, he bats right, throws right, uh, a height of 6'1", and he weighed 185 pounds. One of the greatest pitchers of all time, Alexander broke in with the Phillies in 1911 and set a rookie record with 28 victories. From 1915 to 1917, he won 30 games each season, earning him the title of Alex the Great. In 1915, he pitched four one-hitters, a record, and in 1916, spun 16 shutouts, another record. Uh, he holds for the National League record for career shutouts with 90. There you have card number 14, Grover Alexander. Next up is Alexander Cartwright. Alexander Cartwright is our next person in this 44 card set. Alexander Cartwright, inducted in 1938, was an organizer. Born April 17, 1820, died July 12, 1892. Alexander Cartwright is often called the father of modern baseball. It was Cartwright that drew up the first set of baseball rules and organized the first team, the Knickerbockers, in 1845. He used his engineering abilities and degree to diagram the baseball diamond with bases 90 feet apart. He set the rules for three outs per inning and unchangeable batting order orders. In 1949, Cartwright set out for the West Coast and Gold brought the game to out to California. So that was card number 15, Alexander Cartwright. Next up is card number 16, Henry Chadwick. Henry Chadwick. All right. So Henry Chadwick, inducted in 1938, was a writer organizer. Born October 5th, 1924. Died April 20th, 1908. Henry Chadwick was the first writer to populate popularize the game in its early years. He was instrumental in organizing the National Association of Ballplayers in 1858, and he was chairman of the Rules Committee and introduced many changes that shaped the game. Henry invented the box score and authorized many books on the game, including the first rule book. Right. Card number 16, Henry Chadwick. Next up is card number 17, Eddie Collins. Ed, Eddie Collins here is next up to bat. Card number 17. I'm going to have a beard like Cartwright soon. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's going to get long there, Bibby. Is it going to get long? What happened to you? I seen you took your mustache off. Did, did your daughters not like you with the mustache on, or what was up with that? Or are you going to try it all over again? Are you going to skip the, the, the mustache, or did I, I, I don't think I missed you talking about that in one of your videos yet. So you're just going to go with the beard? Just going to grow a long beard? Pretty soon you'll be able to put rubber bands in it to make it look really skinny. <laughs> Sorry, just trying to have some fun in the channel. Eddie Collins, card number 17, second baseman, inducted in 1939. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Um, again, a second baseman, born May 2nd, 1887, died March 25th, 1951. Bats left, throws right. All right, he's a little guy, short little guy like me. 5'9". I used to be 5'7", but I'm 5'6 now. I shrunk an inch. I don't know if I really shrunk an inch, but when they measure me, I just got to stand tall. 
and then I'd probably be back up to my 5.7. <laughs> All right, weighing in at 175, Eddie began his career in 1906 with the Philadelphia Athletics and was a member of Connie Mack's famous $100,000 infield. Twice he stole six bases in one game and is a member of the ex exclusive 3,000 hit club. He holds the record for playing more years than any player 25 in the 20th century. He was a superb base runner and infielder and batted over 340 10 for 10 seasons. After his retirement, he coached for the Phillies. That's card number 17, Eddie Collins. Next up to bat here, we got card number 18, Lou Gehrig. Lou Gehrig? Oh, sorry about that. It's a pretty sharp little artist rendition of Lou Gehrig there, and that sign in the background. Must have been there when, when the artist was painting him. Lou Gehrig. 1939 inductee, first baseman, born June 19, 1903, died at a young age, though, of in June 2nd of 1941, 38 years old. The pride of the Yankees, Gary holds the record for consecutive games played with 2,130 until Cal Ripken beat him. All right. He was the American League's MVP in 1927 and holds the Junior Circuit single season record I lost my place there, but I threw myself off when I looked up. Uh, he bats left, throws left, uh, height 6 foot, and weighs in right at 200 pounds. He holds the Junior Circuit single season record for 184 RBIs in 1931. In 1932, he became the first 20th century player to hit four consecutive home runs in one game. And in 1934, he won the coveted Triple Crown. With Babe Ruth, he became part of the greatest slugging duel in, place, in baseball history. I'm all tongue-tied today. I don't know why. All right, but card number 18, first baseman Lou Gehrig. All right. Next up, we have Willie Keeler here. Willie Keeler, card number 19 in the set. Almost to the halfway mark here. Willie Keeler, inducted in 1939, was an outfielder. All right, let me do this real quick. Refresh the flat, the, 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 the chat, so I know where I left off. March 3rd, he was born March 13th, 1872, died January 1st, 1923. Bats left, throws right, was five foot five. He was shorter than me and weighed a mere 140 pounds. We Willie Keeler was baseball's greatest place hitter, whose motto was, hit them where they ain't. In 1897, he hit 44 in 44 consecutive games, a National League record shared by Pete Rose. He originally broke it as a left-handed third baseman, but switched to the outfield, where he became the greatest right fielder of his day. Card number 19, Willie Keeler. Next up is card number 20, George Sisler. George Sisler is our next card in this 44 card set. George Sisler, inducted in 1939, born March 24th. Hold on a second. 1893, died March 26, 1973, bats left, throws left, height was 5'11", another person under 6 foot, weighing in at 170, probably the greatest fielding first baseman of all time, 
gorgeous George holds the record for most hits in a season with 257 in 1920 and led the league in batting with 407 in 1920 and 420 in 1922. He missed the entire 1923 season with a serious eye injury and would have collected 3,000 career hits had he not missed the 23 campaign. He broke in with the St. Louis Browns in 1915 as a pitcher, and in his first game, he bested Walter Johnson one to nothing. So, card number 20, and George Sisler. Okay, next up to bat is card number 21, Cap Anson. Cap Anson, picture there in that card. Cap Anson, 1939 inductee, was first class. <laughs> okay, first class. I don't know why they called it first class there. Maybe they meant first base. I don't know. Let's see what it says here. Born April 17, 1852. Died April 14, 1922. Bats right, throws right, height six foot, and weighed 225. The greatest player of the 19th century, Cap hit over 320 times and won four batting championships. He was the first player to collect 3,000 hits, and he was also the first player to hit three consecutive home runs and uh, banned out four doubles in one game. He managed Chicago for 20 years, leading them to five pennants in 1800 to 1881 and 82 to 85 and in 1886. He retired at the age of 45 in 1897 when he hit 302. That was card number 21, Cap Anston. Next up is Card number 22, Charles Kaminsky, is the first half of this set. Charles Kaminsky. It's a little close-up shot of his card here. Charles Kaminsky, inducted in 1939 as a manager, born August 15, 1859, Died October 26, 1931. Along with Pan, Ben Jansen, Charles Kaminsky played a prominent role in founding the American League. As a player, he held an average career with a 270 batting average. He began managing in 1885 and led the Browns to four straight pennants. He was owner of the White Sox from 1900 till his death in 1931. And the old Romans team won the pennant in 1900, 1901, 1906, 1917, and 1919. Card number 22, Charles Kaminsky, manager. All right. Take a little bit of a break here real quick. Just curious, how are these cards sleeved, protected, and stored? They're an oddball size. Yeah. It does make it tricky. I could get the... Uh, I have to try and see. They might go in... Um, they do make different sizes of notebook sleeves, like my postcards for my Hall of Famers. Um, these go in a binder sleeve at... Uh, at four four spots to a sleeve on these these are just a little bit smaller than the postcard so i think they might make something that has another size down from this before you get into the nine cards on the sheet i believe there is something and i'd have to see if they fit is uh six cards on a page but yeah, that is an interesting correct, uh, question there, Kevin, because, uh, yes, they do not fit in a... a uh, and I think they make oversized 
uh, penny sleeves, but I just put them into. Uh, uh, they came actually in this uh, in these team bags, so you can fit half the set in one and half the set in the other, and then you just seal it back up to protect them this way. So that's where I'll be putting these when I do finish today. Is back into these team bags that they came in for now. But yeah, it is a little bit more trickier with that, that's for sure. So let's see, I got my sip of water there. And yeah, Kevin, uh, you probably saw in the title, I did get my Left Behind uh, Series 2 box. You probably remember when I went through the Series 1 that Left Behind sent with me, right? They Yes, but they are definitely an odd ball size, for sure. So I'll have to see what my new Series 1 box looks like as soon as we do this, and then the Bipster box, and then I'm going to open up the, uh, the left behind. But yeah. So let's move on to card number 23. I'm going to try and speed things up just a little bit here. All right, so card number 23. Okay. Candy Cummings. Candy Cummings was a pitcher in 1939 inductive. Born October 17th, 1848. Died May 17th, 1924. Bats right, throws right, height 5'9", weighing in at 120. William Arthur Candy Cummings is credited with throwing the first curveball. He invented the curveball, according to legend, throwing oyster shells into the ocean. After several seasons perfecting the curve... In amateur competition, he joined the New York and the National Association, where he posted a 34-19 and 19 record. In 1876, the National League's first season, he won 16 and lost 8 for Hartford. In 1877, he was elected president of the International Association, the first minor league. All right, that was card number 23, Candy Cummings. Card number 24 is Buck Ewing. Buck Ewing is our next card up the bat here. And player, Buck Ewing, inducted in 1939, was a catcher, born October 17, 1859, died October 20, 1906. Bats right, throws right, height 5'10", another one under 6 foot, weighing in at 188. Buck is best remembered as a catcher, yet he equally skilled, yet was equally skilled at playing the infield and the outfield. He hit over 300 in 11 of his 18 seasons and led the National League in homers in 1883. He possessed a strong throwing arm and often threw runners out without rising from squatting position behind the plate. He managed the Reds from 1895 to 1899 and the Giants in 1900. That's card number 24, Buck Ewing. Card number 25 is Charles Radburn. Charles Radburn is our next ball player here. Charlie Radburn, born in or Inducted in 1939, was a pitcher born December 11, 1854, and died February 5, 1897. Bats right, throws right, height was 5'9", and weighing in at 168. Old Haas Radburn was the greatest of the 19th century pitchers. He possessed incredible speed, good control, and great stamina. In 11 short seasons, he won 308 games in uh, 1883. He won 49 games and another 60 in 1884. He never again uh, had a season like 83 and 84, but still won 20 or more, five more seasons. During the 1983-84, during the 18... Wait, during the 83-84 campaign. Uh, that's not making much sense. Charlie pitched an incredible 1,300 innings and pitched and struck out 
441 batters in 84. Okay. Okay, 1883 and 1884. Don't mind me. I'm in outer space somewhere. <laughs> but there we go. Card number 25, Charlie Radburn. Yeah, that's right. Left mind is awesome. Congrats. Yes, it's going to be interesting. And, and he sent it to me UPS. I don't know. Maybe it was cheaper. Or he just wanted to get, get it to me a little bit sooner sometimes than the post office. But that was card number 25. Moving on to card number 26 is A.J. Spaulding. Everybody knows who A.J. Spaulding is in baseball, I would think. Okay. A.J. Spaulding, inducted in 1939 as an executive. Born September 2nd, 1850. Died September 9th, 1915. A.J. Spaulding. A.G. Spaulding was a star pitcher in the 1870s. He pitched for Boston of the National Association and helped organize the National League in 1876. He was the winningest National League pitcher for Chicago in 76, posting 47 victories en route to the pennant, and he led strong opposition to rid baseball of gambling and fighting and helped block a bid by the National League to syndicate games in 1901. He introduced baseball to England in 1874, founded the sporty goods business that bears his name in 1876, and organized a round-the-world tour in 1888. So that was card number 26 of A.J. A.G. I don't know why I say A.J. It just sounds better. A.J. instead of A.G. It sounds like A.G., the Attorney General. All right, card number 27, Rogers Hornsby. Drink Coca-Cola with Rogers Hornsby. Roger Hornsby, inducted in 1942. All right. Second baseman, born April 27th, 1896, died January 5th, 1963. Bats right, throws right, 5'11", an inch under 6 foot, weighing in at 175. Considered by most to be the greatest right-handed hitter in the history of the game, he was National League batting champion seven times, six in a row from 1920 to 1925. During a few years... Span from 1921 to 1925, the Raja, Ra, Raja averaged better than 400 with averages of 397, 401, 384, 424, and 403 in, in 1922. And again in 1925, Hornsby won the coveted Triple Crown. He managed the Cardinals to the World Championship in 1926 and later managed the Reds and Browns. Okay, so that was Roger Hornsby. Card number 27. Card number 28 is Judge Landis. Judge Landis is next up to bat. All right. Judge Landis, 1944, in, inducted into the Hall of Fame and was a commissioner of baseball. Born November 20th, 1866, died November 25th, 1944. Judge Kenshaw Mountain Landis helped restore the public confidence in baseball following the Black Sox scandal in 1919 by ruling with a strong hand. Uh, detected Commissioner elected commissioner in 1920, his final act was to ban eight White Sox players for life for the series scandal. It was his integrity and leadership that established baseball in the respect and esteem of the fans. Card number 28, Judge Lance Landis. Card number 29, next up the bat, is Roger Breshnan. Roger Breshnan. I wonder if he was a catcher. Roger Breshnan, 
inducted in 1945, was a catcher, born June 11, 1879, died December 4, 1944, Bat batted right through right, height 5'8", weighing in at 180, battery mate of Hall of Fame pitcher Christy Mathewson, Roger was considered by John McGraw to be the best catcher he ever saw. He started his career as a pitcher for the Washington in the National League in 1897, where he posted a 30 or a 4 and 0 record, sorry. In 1907, Bresnahan introduced shin guards that are now a standard part of a catcher's gear. That was card number 29, George Bresnahan. Next up is card number 30, Dan Brothers. Dan Brothers is our next Hall of Famer here. Dan Brothers, inducted in 1945, was a face first baseman. He was born May 8, 1858, died August 3, 1932, batted left through right, height was 6'2", and he weighed in at 205. Dan Brothers is considered the Babe Ruth of the 19th century because of his tremendous power. He hit over 314 times and won five batting titles in 1887, the year that walks counted as hits. Big Dan hit 419, but he lost the batting title to Cap Anson. Though he played uh, during the dead ball era, his lifetime batting average is ninth on the all-times list. So card number 30, Dan Brothers. Inducted in 1945. Next up to bat is card number 31, Fred Clark. Fred Clark. Fred Clark, in 1945, he was inducted as an outfielder. Born October 3rd, 1872. Died August the 14th, uh, 1960. Batted left through right. His height was 5'10", and his weight was 165. Fred broke in with, the, with Louisville of the National League in 1894 and managed the team for four seasons, beginning at, age, at the age of 24. Um, he piloted the Pirates from 1900 to 1915 and won four pennants with the Bucks. He possessed excellent speed, as he stole 506 bases throughout his career. Uh, Fred ranked sixth on the all-time triples list. So Fred Clark, card number 31. Next up is card number 32, Jimmy Collins. Jimmy Collins. Jimmy Collins. Next up to bat, Jimmy Collins, inducted in 1945, third baseman, born January 16, 1870, died March 6, 1943, bats right, throws right, 5'8", weighing in at 160. A standout defensive third baseman for most of his career with the Boston Braves and the Boston Red Sox. Jimmy was the first player to play away from the base and thus mastered the art of defensing against the bunt. In 1898, he led the National League in home runs with 15. He jumped to the newly organized Red Sox team as player manager and led the box, Bo Sox to pennants in 1903 and 1904. That was card number 32. Card number 33 up the bat next is Ed Delahanty. Ed Delahanty. This puts us three-fourths of the way through the set. So let's find out about Hugh Duffy here. Hugh Duffy, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1945. Um... Born November 26, 1866, died October 19, 1954. Um, 
His height was 5'7", his weight was 168, one of baseball's most powerful hitters among players of his size. Though only 5'7", he drove in 100 or more RBIs eight times. In 1894, while with Boston, Hughes set a major league record that will probably stand forever, hitting 438 in a single season. In 1894, he won the Triple Crown as he led the National League with 18 homers and RBIs, 145. He later managed four major league clubs. Card number 34, Hugh Duffy. Okay, card number 35 up next is Hughie Jennings. Hughie Jennings is next up to bat here for Hughie Jennings. Hughie Jennings, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1945, was an outfielder, born October 30, 1867, died July 2, 1903, batted right, threw right, height 6'1", weighing in at 170. Big Ed Delahanty was the oldest of five brothers who played in the major leagues. He is the only player to win uh, batting titles in both the American League and the National League. He smashed four home runs and a single in a game on July 13, 1896. And a year later, went nine for nine in a doubleheader. He died a mysterious death at Niagara Falls in 1903. His 345 average ranks fourth on the all time list. That is card number 33, Ed Delahanty. All right, that puts us three fourths of the way through the set. Let me pop in here quick. Um, <laughs> Interesting. Thanks. Awesome. Congrats. He always sends UPS. He knows all about those UPS employees. <laughs> well, the UP. So, so, so let me tell you a little background intel here. Since since Kevin brought it up, <laughs> the UPS drivers are spoiled because they get their trucks loaded for them. They load their trucks for the UPS drivers. On the other hand, the USPS employees, we have to go in the mornings, get our, get our route ready, load our trucks, and when we get back, we have to finish everything before we go home for the day. The UPS driver, they have people that work in the warehouse. They sort the mail. And they put it in order in the truck for them. They put it in order in the truck for them. And then all they have to do is go drive their route, get the next package, get the next package, get the next package, get the next package. Yes. <laughs> that is a little bit of a difference. But you know what? Each company decides to do things their own ways. So if I was ever a UPS driver, I would probably like rather be the driver than the one sorting the packages and putting them in order. Just a little side note there. <laughs> All right, let's go into the last quarter of this set, though. Card, num or card number uh, 34, Hugh Duffy. Hugh Duffy looks a little bit excited there. I don't know why, but let's see if we can find out. Looks like he was with the Detroit Tigers. That's funny. It don't really tell you their teams here, just information. Well, they do give you some information on the teams they played for and stuff. Hughie Jennings, 1945, shortstop manager. Um, he was born April 2nd, 1869. Died February 1st, 1928. He bats right, throws right. Um, his height was 5'8", and he weighed 165. An excellent shortstop who could run the bases with the best, stealing 359 lifetime, uh, Hugh, Hughie, <laughs> Hughie, 
made his mark as manager from 1907 to 1920. In his first three seasons with the Detroit Tigers, he led the Bengals to pennants in 1907 to 1909. Uh, years, uh, 14 period, 1907 to 1920, won 1,131 and lost um, 1,000 or 972 games. Okay, card number 35 out of the 44 card set. Card number 36 is Mike King Kelly. So King Kelly coming up to bat next here. King Kelly. All right, Mike King Kelly. 1945 was inducted into the Hall of Fame an outfield catcher. Born December 31st, 1957. He was a tax write-off for his for that year for his parents, that's for sure. Born in 1857, if they even did taxes back in the day. <laughs> uh, died November 8, 1894. Bats right, throws right, five foot ten, weighed 180 pounds. By far the most popular player of the 19th century. Mike was dubbed King because of his popularity. He was a daring base runner, which led fans to invent Slide Kelly Slide slogan. He is credited with inventing the hit and run and that and he revolutionized the game. In 1886 he won the National League batting title, was sold to Boston for a record ten thousand dollars. Card number thirty six, Mike King Kelly. Card number thirty seven is Jim O'Rourke. One of the O's, one of the O's in the in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Not many players with their names starting with O, since it is uh, St. Patrick's Day today for Jim O'Rourke, 1945 outfielder. He was inducted as an outfielder, born August 24, 1852, died January 8, 1990. Bats right, throws right, 5 foot 8, weighing in at 185 pounds. Orator Jim devoted more than 40 years of his life to the game as a player manager, umpire, and minor league president. He played for several teams throughout his 19 year career, finishing up 1893 with. Washington, at the age of 52, in 1904, he came back to catch a complete game for the New York Giants, going one for four and played in the minors through 1907. Jim O'Rourke, outfielder. And let me go over the O's real quick. Because there, there's four people in the Hall of Fame with O's. And I think three out of the four must have been the Irish. We have Henry Hank O'Day. We have Walter O'Malley and James O'Rourke. And then, of course, the fourth one was Mel Ott, Melvin Ott. So O'Day, O'Malley, and O'Rourke. So four Irishmen in the Hall of Fame with the O's. The O's have it. <laughs> All right. Card number 38, Jesse Burkett. Jesse Burkett, as we get ready to round down this set here. Jesse Burkett. What? No, wait a minute. Where am I? 38. Not yet. 30, 38 first is Wilbert Roberts, Robinson. Sorry. This is Wilbert Robinson. Okay, Wilbert Robinson. That's Jesse Burkett. This one's Jesse Burkett. <laughs> um, I need new glasses, I think. <laughs> Wilbert Robinson, uh, 1945, as a manager catcher, was inducted into the Hall of Fame, born June 2nd, 1863, died August 8th, 1934. Bats right, throws right, height is 5'8", and weight is 215. A star catcher for the Baltimore Orioles that won pennants in 1894. 
95, and 96. He later won fame as manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers from 1914 to 1931. He set a major league record that still stands, seven hits in seven times at bat in a single game. Card number 38, Wilbert Robinson. Card number 39 is Jesse Burkett. Jesse Burkett. Oh, sorry about that. Forgot to highlight the card up close here so you could see Jesse's artist rendition there. Uh, what's it say? Da, 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 da. Uh, uh, mowed his grass. Weekly. Nice guy. Irish law firm. That's cool there, Robert. You've mowed a lot of lawns back in the day, didn't you? <laughs> oh no, is it stormy there, Bipster? Hopefully, hopefully you don't blow away while you're watching, watching my show here. <laughs> Storming here. Okay, on to card number thirty-nine, Jesse Burkett. 1945 outfielder born December 4th 1868 died May 27th 1953 bats left throws left height 58 weighing in at 155 one of only three players to hit over 400 three times Cobb Hornsby are the other two was called crab by his teammates because of his serious depth position. Considered to be the greatest bunter in the history of the game, he hit 345 or better for nine consecutive seasons. In 1893 to 1901, he led the National League in base hits four times and won the batting title. All right, moving on to card number 40, Frank Chance is our next Hall of Famer up to bat, Frank Chance with the Cubbies. Frank Chance. Card number 40, four more players to go after this. Sorry, it was getting a little bit unkempt there as we get down to the last few cards here. All right, Frank Chance, 1946, was a first baseman and a manager. Born September 9th, 1877. Died September 14, 1924. Bats right, throws right. Uh, height was six foot and weighing in at 190. Frank Chance was the finest first baseman in the National League during his career. He was playing manager of the Cubs from 1905 to 1912 and earned his nickname of Peerless Leader by leading the Cubs to four pennants in five years in 1906 to 1910. He also managed the Yankees in 1913 and 14, and the Red Sox in 1923. Card number 40, Frank Chance. Card number 41, Jack Cheesebro. Jack Cheesebro is next up the bat here. Jack Cheesebro. Jack Cheesebro, inducted in 1946 as a pitcher, born June 5th, 1874, died November 6th, 1931, bats right, throws right, height 5'9", weighing in at 180, a spitball ace with the Pirates, Yankees, and Red Sox. Happy Jack had a phenomenal year in 1904 when he set an American League records and starts with 51, 48 complete games and 41 victories. He was forced to retire due to arm trouble in 1909. So there you have it, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1946, Jack Cheesebro. Next is card number 42, Johnny Evers. Johnny Evers is next up to bat here. Again with the Cubbies. Johnny Evers 
1946, inducted as a second baseman, born July 21st, 1881, died March 28, 1947. Bats left, throws right, 5 foot 9, weighing in at 130. Johnny was the middleman in the famous Tinker Evers to Chance tr double play combination in 1908. It was Evers's knowledge of the rules that saved the pennant for the Cubs in the famous Fred Merkel play. In 1914, he joined the Braves and led them to the Miracle Pennant. He finished his playing career with the Phillies in 1917, card number 42. And then, next we have card number 43, Joe Tinker. The next to last card in the set here. Joe Tinker. Okay. Joe Tinker, 1946. Inducted as a shortstop. Born July 22nd, 1880. Died July 27th, 1948. Bats right, throws right. Five foot nine, weighing in at 175. Says, guess I need to check the radar. Bipster, watch out for older women in black dresses riding bicycles. <laughs> Bipster of all things wax packed. Wizard of Oz reference, huh, Robert? <laughs> Robert's always the punster, that's for sure. <laughs> all right, so card number 43 again, Joe Tinker, 1946, shortstop inductee. Born July 22nd, 1880. Died July 27th, 1948. Bats right, throws right, 5'9", 175. A steady shortstop for the Chicago Cubs and member of the... I did just read that all over again at the beginning. <laughs> he led the National League shortstops in fielding five times, proved to be a pesky hitter against giant great Christy Mathewson. He was a player manager for the Reds in 1913 and, and the Chicago Federals of 1914 and 15. He finished his crane playing career manager of the Cubs in 1916. So card number 43, Joe Tinker. And finally, to our last card and the set here, card number 44, Eddie Plank. Eddie Plank. Eddie Plank was a pitcher and inducted in 1946. Born August 31st, 1875. Died February 24th, 1926. Batted left, threw left, height 5'11", weighing in at 175. Gettysburg Eddie is, has more shutouts than any other left-hander in baseball history. His 327 victories ranked second only to Warren Spann and wins by a portsider. Uh, Plank led the A's to six pennants but had difficulty in World Series play with a 2 and 5 record despite a 1.55 ERA. So there you have it. The art the Deckle Edge Art Card Series on this. Deckle Edge Art Card Series 1984 set. Series 1, Hall of Famers. This is uh, set number 741 of the 10,000 numbered sets. So these were all hand numbered back in the day. So that is cool. Yeah, you look you look, you look just Dorothy. I'm worried about you. <laughs> Interesting. So thank you for allowing me to share that uh, card set. And just so you can see, let me see if I can get the angle right here. You can see these have like, they don't have straight edges. That's for sure. So it does have a nice little beveled edge on the cards. Let me set this aside. I'll put them back in their team bags when we get to that point. Okay, 
So let me see. I think for this next part yesterday it worked out pretty good because it has just the right angle here for the wheel of numbers for the Bipster packs. Okay. The wheel of number for the Bipster packs. Oh, wait. I keep forgetting I want to do it upside down. Mainly because that brings the speaker closer up there. All right. So this is our the, the new way in which we do the Bipster packs for those that might have missed out on it the last uh, yesterday when we started it. This is the new way to pick the Bipster packs. So I will just put it up here. I'll write down the numbers as we choose them in the Bipster pack. And that is the order that we will open them up in when we pull them out of the box. Okay. So if everybody is ready, we will move into phase two. And then after this, phase three will be going through and seeing what Left Behind Time sent me. All right. So... You can see on the wheel here that it is numbered 1 through 52. Give you a, an angle so you can see the wheel here. It is numbered 1 through 52. And as in my usual uh, manner here, I will shuffle the numbers. So you'll see the numbers change here as I shuffle it seven times. One, two, three, no, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, it is shuffled seven times. Um, uh, Robert, did your uh, package arrived from me yet. Yay, you look just a... <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and spin the wheel. We'll choose our... Oops. Looks like the first one is pack number eight. Could you guys hear it? Could you guys hear it by chance? I'm going to turn it up just a hair more. All right. So I'm going to remove number eight from the wheel. And we will spin two more times. like we're going for the low numbers today. Pack number 10. Pack number 10. All right, so we got pack number 8, pack number 10. And any predictions on the last pack number here? Let's go here. And I don't know if it's removing it or not, but that's okay. We can only pick the same pack once. number 24 pack number 24 so 8 10 and 24 oh no we're only choosing from the front half of the box I don't know is that good or bad we'll find out <laughs> you get this all closed up um, reopen it and have it ready for tomorrow Okay, so let me close this up here really quick. Got 
that ready for tomorrow. All right. Put this off right here. Set that out of the way. Bonus pack, please. I feel sorry for for uh, game show hosts like Pat Sajak that have to. Okay, we will do a bonus pack since we got up to ten thumbs up. All right, because the Bipster requested it, I can do it. Okay, let me uh, get this line back up again. We got to choose a bonus pack. The Bipster. Got it in. I looked over. I was like, okay, we've got 10 thumbs up. 10 thumbs up. We'll go ahead and do that. Okay. I'm going to turn the music up a little bit more just because you asked. Don't say it's too loud there, Bipster. Oh. Pack number 22. All right, we got pack number 22. So we're only in the first half of the box, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and get ready here. Let me um, close this up. I keep forgetting I turned it upside down for the speaker, and then I didn't even have it on at first. So we're going to pull four packs out of the box today. Four back, four packs. Sounds like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Da -da 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 You guys got to watch the Mr. Rogers movie they made. I really enjoyed that. I watched that the other day. My wife didn't want to watch it, so when she was out of town, I watched it by myself, and I really enjoyed it. I did. So let me uh, let me set this here out of the way. We can have the Victor box hanging out with us here. So we got to pull out pack number eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is pack number eight. Pack number ten. And then pack number twenty-four. And pack number twenty-two. Can we open? Can we open 2011 Tops update? Uh, I wish I had a 2011 Tops update, but I don't have any 2011 Tops update. Are you talking to somebody there? Um, hello, Danny, Michael, Heath. Hi, Danny. Hey, hipster. Sounds like Mr. Oops. What was that? Oh, why did you fall down? Must have got unstickified. I have to put a little tape, up, piece of tape up there to hold that up. That's why we're searching for certain cards. Um, hey, Michael. So, Michael Heat, Danny and Gray's Cards and Toys. Thanks for popping in here, Danny and Gray. So, we are going to open up in this order. So, pack number 8 will be first. Pack number 10 will be second. Pack number 24 will be third. And pack number 22 will be fourth. So we'll do one, two, three, and four. Let's close up the Bipster box. Ah, uh, come on, really? Really? Trying to fall down on me in the back here. So we will go through these, and then we will get into that Binds box. And I'm going to have to move things along here that's for sure okay so I'm gonna scooch this back just a little bit I don't need that no more we already pulled the packs I'm gonna move this so we have a little bit of extra space here to work with but we're gonna open up this one first and go through these four packs as for the Bipster's request to open up a bonus pack 
Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we can find here. So we got a uh, Hall of Famer Juan Marco, Juan Marco, Frankie Frisch, Frankie Frisch inducted in 1947. Then we've got Luis Aparicio, Hall of Famer, Philippe Alou. Wait, let me put the the Hall of Famers over here. Put them near the star. That's where we should put them. Put them there with near the star. All right, Philippe Alou is not a Hall of Famer, but a star player. All right, and then we've got uh, Sparky Anderson. Sparky Anderson is George Anderson. That's Hall of Famer. Oh, Hall of Famer over here, Blondo. though. Okay. Then we've got uh, Ralph Terry, Ralph Terry, Ralph Terry. Don't know if Terry's a Hall of Famer. At Donald, thirty Bibby babies were. Made today, coming your way soon. Okay, 30 more bi Bibby Babies? <laughs> these are Bibby Babies, yes. These are the Bipster box with all the Bibby Babies in them. <laughs> Not yet. Expect it tomorrow. Have a, a theory session at noon, a therapy session at noon. Hopefully the mail will be a little late tomorrow. Ralph Terry is Bill Terry. Okay, William, William Terry. I'm getting, uh, I see it. Okay, William or Bill H. Terry. Okay, so I'll have to remember. Oh, Hall of Famer stack, Hall of Famer stack. Lloyd Wainer, Lloyd Wainer, Diamond King. Boy, these yellows do not show up good. There we go. Lloyd Wainer, Lloyd Wainer, Hall of Famer. Max Carey, Pittsburgh. Hall of Famer. Uh, Al Barlick, 1989 Hall of Famer. Willie McCovey, 1986 Hall of Famer. Tom Seaver, 1992 Hall of Famer. Ryan Sandberg, 2005 Hall of Famer. Hideki Matsui, star player. With the Brooklyn Dodgers, oops. Hunter Pence with the Philadelphia Phillies. There's a Jim Rice. Jim Rice, Hall of Famer. Um, who's this? Devin Mesoraco. Mesoraco. Um, Ramirez, Erasmus Ramirez. Tops 206 card. Curtis Granderson with New York. Uh, Roy Tulowitzki. Troy. I knew it was close. Roy, Troy. Tulowitzki with Colorado. Mickey Lolick. I like these action pack cards. These are awesome cards. I'll, I'll show you the side in a second here. Uh, Lolich. Lolich. Okay, not a Hall of Famer, but, and then Monty Irvin, Monty Irvin is a Hall of Famer, but I like these action pack cards, I like the design they have on the back here, but if you look closely, I don't know if you, you probably can't see it in the camera, but it's like a, it's like a folded card and put together, actually it's not even really that, the way I, oh you can see the seam there. So it's like a folded, it's like a thin card and then folded together. You can kind of see it, but probably not. But Lilik is not a Hall of Famer. I like that. Matsui sells well. Hint, hint. Matsui. Oh, the Matsui sells well.
if that is rookie card or anything, the Matsui sells well. Hmm. Bunch of collectors for Matsui cards, huh? All right, now we're going to move into pack number two with another action pack on the top there and a Phil Necro on the back. Okay. Put that there. Got a Richie Ashburn. Hall of Famer. Richie Ashburn. Another Mickey Lolick. Another Mickey Lolick. Uh, Mari Wills. Mari Wills, star player. Carlton Fisk, Hall of Famer. Uh, Bill Freehan. Bill Freehan. Freehan. Uh, star player. Ed Cranepool. Cranepool. I don't think Cranepool's in the Hall of Fame. No. And then Leo DeRocher. Diamond King, Leo DeRocher, uh, John McGraw, John McGraw, Roberto Alomar, 2011 Hall of Famer, Goose Gossage, 2008 Hall of Famer, Willie McCovey, 1986 Hall of Famer, um, Jim Bunning, 1996 Hall of Famer. Herb Pencock, 1948 Hall of Famer. Now I'm going to skip to the chase here. Phil Necro, oh, uh, Fairfield Wednesday. Phil Necro, 1997 Hall of Famer. Jim Leyland, Leyland? is it Jim Leyland? Okay, then we got a Ken Griffey says about Ben Sheets with the Brewers. Then we've got an Alfonso Soriano with the Cubbies. Uh, Adam Wainwright with the Cardinals. Uh, Gooday, Josh Beckett. Josh Beckett with the Red Sox. And Chase Utley with the Philadelphia Phillies. Okay, so next up to bat here is park pack number three. Bob Lehman's on the back. And Harry Bretching is in the front of the pack. All right, so here we go. Next up to bat here. Oh, I think that must have got bumped. Should be tipped back a little bit more. There we go. Okay. Um, Harry Breaching. Breaching? Breaching? It's not brushing hand. Breaching. Okay. Diamond King. Um, Johnny Pesky with Boston. Pesky. Uh, Joe Cronin with Boston. Joe Cronin with Boston. Cronin. Hall of Famer. Harry Hooper. Hall of Famer. Grover Alexander is a Hall of Famer. Then we got Ray Schlack. Ray Schlack. Hall of Famer, Ray Schlack, double. Uh, Kirby Higby. Kirby Higby. Kirby Higby, double. Then we got Hodap. Johnny Hodap. 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 <laughs> then we got Richie Ashburn, 1995 Hall of Famer. Roberto Alomar, 2011, Ray Schlack, 1955, Ray Schlack, Fairfield Double, 
Phil Negro, 1997. All right, Curtis Granderson of the Tigers. Uh, and that Lance Berkman. Yep, Lance Berkman with the Astros. Uh, Chamberlain, Joba Chamberlain with the Yankees. Uh, Troy Tulowitzki. Yep, got his first name right with the Colorado Rockies. Early win. He's in for the early win. And Bob Lehman. Bob Lehman. Hall of Famer. All right, so it looks like our Hall of Famers are outweighing our... are outweighing our star players. And we got our Hideki Matsui off to the side here. So here's our bonus pack, pack number four. Our bonus pack, pack number four. Let me refresh the stream here so I know where I left off. There we go. Okay. So pack number four, our bonus pack for today, as per Bibby's request. <laughs> All right. Ooh, I like these framed uh, Gypsy Queen. What year was this one? Uh, 2012, David Fries with the Cardinals. All right, next we've got uh, Young with Texas, with the Rangers. What is his name, first name? Michael Young. Michael Young. All right, and then next here we've got for uh, professional baseball leagues, uh, George Wilson. I think Wilson is in. Oh, not this one. All right, Robin Ventura with the Mets, Tops Finest. Ryan Braun with the Milwaukee Brewers. Fairfield Double for Ryan Braun. Robin Ventura with the New York Mets. Robin Ventura with the New York Mets. Then we've got Bartola Colon, 2003 Diamond King, with the Dodgers. Did I miss? <laughs> Hold on just a second there. It is the next and final part coming up soon here. Left Behind Times, Blake's in the house. It's coming up, Blake. You're next as soon as I finish this pack. But let me take care of the $5 Super Chat. Appreciate that, Blake. It came yesterday, so I'm going to be opening it live in just a few minutes here. But thanks for popping into the stream there, Blake. Appreciate you being here. Uh, let me get your entries into the January giveaway. All right. Um... There we go, right here. Let me get your new entries into. The March drawing there, Blake. And let me get this saved. We are now up to 229 entries for the month of March. So, so far, there will be two prizes to be given away. Okay, let me get back in the stream here. Do a refresh on the chat. Appreciate that super chat there, Blake. Yep. The five bells for Blake left behind times, and we will be doing your package here very shortly to see what our series two is like. Let's do a little housekeeping here real quick. Get into the rest of this. Lou Whitaker. Lou Whitaker. Okay, star player here. Dwight Gooden. Dwight Gooden with the Mets. Right. Fairfield double for Dwight Gooden. 
and an all-star for Dwight Gooden. Max Scherzer with the Washington Nationals. Kiki Collier. Kiki Collier. Hall of Famer. Uh, Heine Grow. Heine Grow. Grow Heine. All right, and then we've got Hoyt Wilhelm. Wilhelm. Okay. Uh, Joe Adcock. Adcock. Uh, Joe Adcock is a Fairfield double. All right. And then our last card for the Bipster box today is Tommy Davis. Tommy Davis from Legendary Cuts. Tommy Davis. Okay. So we got more star players than Hall of Famers today. And then the head dick Matsui. Let me set this all off to the side here. Let me put that over in there for now. Put these... Um, Hall of Famers here for my Hall of Fame sort. Put these cards here for my star player sort. Okay. And now, without further ado, I'm going to leave. Uh, actually, yeah. Let me put the Bipster box away for now so we got room on the table here. A little bit more room for the box. And let's bring up the, the Fragile box here that came from UPS yesterday. And let's see what Left Behind sent. Uh, I'm in Kenshaw, Bipster. Hope the weather isn't too bad here. Bye, Bipster box. <laughs> Bipster's waving to it. Okay. Let me use the knife. It says fragile, but it doesn't say be careful. No, I'm just teasing. So let me see here. Okay, what do we got here? Okay, there we go, I think. Let me uh, cut this. Let me cut this carefully here. Let's see Blake and my name there. Okay, Uh-oh, we do got a... Is there anything I need to hide in here, Blake, or just... I can open the box. Can I just open the box? I do see a note on top. I do see a note on top. Let me turn it this way. And in usual fashion, Blake has got it set up here. Another Blom doll. Baseball cards extraordinaire. <laughs> it says the Blom ball baseball cards. Seattle Mariners logo. That's the old logo. Of course, you see I'm wearing Seahawks today. Because <laughs> that's the only ball cap I have with a lot of green on it, along with my green rated rookie t-shirt here. So I'm not even wearing my usual Wednesday shirt. But that's okay. So we've got the Blomdahl box here. Oh, my word. Okay, let me, let me see my note here. I'll, we'll read the note first. Blomball cards. Repacked Mystery Packs Series 2. So we knew it would be a Series 2, that's for sure. And it says, your packs include lots of Seattle Mariners, Hall of Fame, PC players, autos, and more. I hope you enjoy Blomdahl Mystery Packs Series 2. Thank you for all you do for us card collectors. God bless uh, Blake B. And he has a scripture reference. You know what that means. 
scripture reference time. Actually, here, I'm, I'm not going to bring the big Bible down. Let me let me bring my mini Bible out. <laughs> yeah, there's such thing as a mini Bible, and this is the complete Bible, Genesis through Revelation. So we got to look for the book of John, the book of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John. John chapter 14. You gotta do things rightly on this channel, that's for sure. So John chapter 14. John chapter 14 and verse 6. So John chapter 14 and verse 6, God's word says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Thanks there, uh, Blake. Appreciate that. And just wanted to share that scripture reference that he references to on his notes. So let me put this here real quick right now. And let's put this note aside, and let's see what's in the Series 2. We've got a different box. Uh, oh, this is an 18, a 1988 Flare box. So let's say 1988. Uh-oh, there's something on the bottom. So we'll just set this aside for now, but we've got... And he does have on here Series 2, Mariners, Mystery Packs, Collect Special Limited Editions. Oh, I like that. He's got this on the bottom here. Collect Edgar Martinez Limited Edition Sets. And then he's got uh, Ken Griffey Jr. and his dad. His dad's... <laughs> I do like this here. Um, 1988 Fleer Baseball logo stickers and trading cards collect Matt Noakes limited edition sets Seattle Mariners with a bat here oh my word and oh he does have the Seattle Seahawks that was appropriate then I had no idea he was putting that on there the Seattle Seahawks logo with the Ichiro with the Ichiro he's got a Cal Ripken Jr. on the bottom here sorry he's got a Cal Ripken Jr. on the where, where'd it go? Yeah, Cal Ripken Jr. Right there. Sorry, I'm not even center, centering it, right? Got that one. Got that one. We got that one. Then he's got the bottom of the box. He even has that redesigned. Limited edition. A big Seattle logo here with... Um, I'm trying to remember who that is for sure. Did he cut that out of a... He probably cut that off a baseball card. <laughs> oh, my word. But he left Ryan Sandberg here and Shane Raleigh, and it turned this into a Matt Noakes. <laughs> oh, Blake, 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 Blake. <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> oh, no, anytime you put a scripture reference, you know I'm going to read it. Um, so let's see. On the bottom here, he's got some oddball stuff. If I wouldn't have saw the note there, I probably would have missed it. He always throws something in in here. Make, make sure I didn't miss anything else. Oh, wait a minute. Let's... Oh, I saw some green. Oh, okay. So it's just packing in the box. So I did not miss anything that I could see there. All right, he's got this in a sleeve. Here is some random but relative... Rel Relevant oddball stuff. Hope you enjoy it, Blake. Oh no, it's a Bruce Bochy. <laughs> oh my word. A Bruce Bochy. Um, is that from that scene? No, that's a different. I don't know what set that one's from. How's he got this sealed? Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh, 
Oh boy, Bruce Bochy. No, no, is this part of... Oh yeah, the 1980 tops. So I've got some more. Uh, here, I'll show you. I don't think I have a Mariner in this one. But let me show you some that I do have off to the side here. Where are these? I think they're behind my Griffies here. Yes. I do have some of these in the back here. But I, I don't have any. Uh, so this is Bruce Bochy. I know that's printed on the card. That's pretty cool, though. Card number 55 of 60. This is part of the other set here. We've got the Dave Parker, um, the Dave Kingman, uh, Tom Seaver, uh, George Brett, uh, Steve Garvey, uh, Rod Carew, Right, yep, Rod Carew, um, Ken Singleton of the Orioles, uh, Fred Lynn, uh, Don Baylor, uh, is this Lee, Lee Mazzilli, Lee Mazzilli, um, Ron Guidry, uh, Reggie Jackson, uh, Jim Rice, uh, Jim Palmer. He kind of reminds me with the blue eyes. Of course, Jim Palmer has the same blue eyes as Cal Ripken did. Um, Johnny Bench. Miss Southern Bell's in the house. How you doing here, Miss Southern Bell? Thanks for popping in here. I have baseball coins. Oh, that is cool. I do have some old style baseball coins too. But thanks for popping in here, Miss Southern Bell. If you make sure you hop on board her bus. Uh, she, I, uh, Bipster of all things wax pack sent me to her channel and I watched a, a video of hers and uh, hopped on board her bus. Those are really big cards, or or is it just me? You, no, these are big cards. These are these are bigger cards. You can see them there. It's right. They are bigger cards. That's for sure. But um, Johnny Bench, um, Mike Schmidt, and Willie Stargell. So I will add this now with my my collection here. I don't, don't know if I'll ever get the whole set, but that is nice there, Blake. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. And then let's see, what else do we got in here? Some some other miscellaneous. What is this from? Sports Heroes, Feats, and Facts. We might just have to go over these one of these days. Turn the page to see greatness oh it's a griffey one oh, okay so this is seattle Marin. oh my word uh oh he's got some surprises in here i think so these are football 60 champions base oh, okay baseball champions is this like a set of but things you could get back in the day probably these are cool what's the copy i don't know but it says uh says, turn the page to see greatness. Turn the page. Well, wow, there's a Ken Griffey Jr. for sure. I know I don't have this Ken Griffey Jr. Oh, my word. <laughs> it's a Ken Griffey Jr. poster. i got to figure out how to put this thing up somewhere. Griffey was the American League home run champ in 1994. He slugged 40 round trippers in just 111 games. That is a cool one there. I definitely do not have this one. And these are designed so they can go in a binder. Thank you there, uh, Blake. I appreciate that. And here's another Ken Griffey Jr. here. Another Ken Griffey Jr. Is this another? Okay, this one's a different fun-filled facts one in here. There we go. His rookie year right here. Junior's World, giving back. He does do a lot for the communities. Thank you, dear Blake. This is awesome, awesome, awesome. I like that one and that one. And this one is Steve Largent. Steve Largent here. With the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> oh my word. There we go. Uh, num a 12th man fan. There we go. Oh, one of these days I'll have to show you. I'll have to bring it down from down, up from my office. 
I am a 12th man fan. Also, just not as big as baseball, but I do follow the Seahawks also. But NFC, NFC West Division Champs. 12th man fan. That is cool. Add that in with my Seattle Seahawks cards. But I do appreciate that, Blake. I appreciate that very much. Oh, yeah, yeah, they do make mini cards as well. So you have the, the regular size cards that everybody's used to, right? Uh, you know, this is like your regular size card. If I hold it up, put it in my hand, you can kind of see the size, right? That's a regular, and they do make mini cards that are micro, they do make micro, they make mini cards and micro cards. Micro cards are probably almost like only an inch tall, and that is an awesome little set. I've had the micros in the past. Matter of fact, I can't remember what happened one time, but I, I did, uh, I did sell off one of my micro set, and then somebody sent me one in a, in, in a family mail call package, for sure. So, we have a new addition to the channel, though. And in lieu of what, uh, what Vibster has done to me, at least now we do have another box of products to open up. We do have another box of products. It's 12. But now we do have the Mariners Series 2. And uh, do you remember how many packs you put in here there, Blake? How many packs did you put in here? Under the 12th man sticky note is an extra card. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yep, I saw that. That's for sure. I saw the, uh, the football card in there. Appreciate that. Dun, 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 dun. Do they have board games? I think they do have a baseball, a baseball game. I don't know if, what quite it. Uh, I do have. I have a game over here where you spin the spinner. So they they have all kinds of different baseball stuff. You would be surprised. Around thirty packs, I think. Okay. Well, I'm. Oh my word. Oh, this is different than your first one. Oh, my word. Look at the inside of the box here. Boy, you took a lot of time to design this one here. Look at the very top here. Series 2, Wheaties, Oh, My Word, Mariners Hall of Fame inductees. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, yep. Where did you find all this neat stuff to put on here? <laughs> this definitely this box is going to be kept too. Greg's leadoff home run accounted for contests only scoring and Mariners 1-0 decision at Minnesota. Uh, clouded his first major league home run, 9-7-88. All-Star Seattle Mayor, this way to the clubhouse. <laughs> Bill signed as the fourth round draft selection with the Seattle Mariners on June 12, 1983 by Scout Jeff Malinoff. And Mariners, Seattle Mariners, I like, boy, you took some care into this box. This is awesome. <laughs> this is an awesome, awesome Got to get the angle off there. Get the light from shining. There we go. You can kind of see all the care that he put in here. A little comic strip. I'll have to see what it says underneath it there. But this is... And there's a... <laughs> oh, I like that. Cal Ripken Jr. with a Seattle Mariner ball cap on. I like that. I like that. Cooperstown. I think that's Edgar. I think that's an Edgar Martinez there. Blake, you put so much care into this. Hey, kids, collect Eric Plunk, Chris Sabo, <laughs> Chris Sabo, and more. Oh, my word. Well, we've got a bunch of packs in here. This one here, 
I think I'm going to open this. You want me to open this one first for today? You want me to open this one today, Blake, by chance? I mean, I'll, I, I'm going to just savor this and open probably one pack a day. I'll probably do like one pack a day. We'll do the Bipster box and a pack from your box. And I'll just grab a pack out and we'll open it up. This is awesome. And he, he's, he's doing the repackages. A 12th man. That one says 12th man on it. This one says baseball. So he's repackaged packs of cards to be special packs. Oh my word. Uh, 89 tops pack. A Don Russ pack. And then a uh, Oh, little Fleer card on the bottom here with a Seattle. Here, I'm going to snag this one out from the bottom here. Uh, can't get it out of there. I might dig it out later. But this is awesome, Blake. I'm going to just set these down in here like this. I could see how you had to kind of squeeze the packs in here. But this is nice. This is nice. 2020 pack, you think 2020, 20, 2020 opening day, 2019 update. Man, for you to just open up these packs and keep these, you must have opened your packs in a special way, that's for sure. Oh my word. Well, I like this so, so much, but I have to finish up here in a little bit. Open the box topper for today, and then go about as you choose. Um, yeah, it, it, it'll it'll be fun here. It'll be fun. People will probably be looking, saying, "Oh, look, he's opening up a 2020 Don Russ," but I don't think it's 2020 Don Russ cards that are in there. This is going to be special. But we'll we'll open up the box topper. Let me leave this right sit right here for now. It does get a glare there. Don't I'm going to put it right up here. Actually, so you can see the series too. All right, but I'll, I'll go ahead and open up the box topper. It feels like a slab of some kind. Oh boy, Blake, <laughs> this is this is awesome. Let me. Uh, I'm like a kid in a candy store sometimes, but you know what? Oh my. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> He's got a USA flag in here. He's got a USA flag for sure in here. And then, uh... <laughs> this, uh... uh CSA. Certified nine mint. That's cool. I could probably reuse that little bag there. You got a flag on top here. Why is the flag on top here? Let's see. Let's look at the back first. How's that sound? It's a uh, CSA certified sports authentication. They even have a a, a number on here. But this is a uh, 1990 contract status signed through 1990. How acquired? Signed by Mariners at number one choice on June in June 1987 amateur draft highlight. Everybody's probably waiting to see what's underneath the flag, right? Well, I can tell you it's a Ken Griffey Jr., a 1990 Don Russ. By, okay, uh, lots of blue tape. No, this is just the, the way they package this one. That's pretty cool. Seattle Mariners, 1990 Don Russ. It's a ketchup card. <laughs> Everybody knows what we're talking about there, but the, I like these cards. 
We pray for the safe return. Oh, you can't really see it there. Let me hold it closer. If I hold it closer, there we go. We pray for the safe return of all Americans involved in Operation Desert Storm and for peace throughout the world. That's awesome. I'm going to find a spot. I know I sent my other one I had to Chuck, but I'm going to keep this one and put this one right in there. Set that back there for now. And I do not have this one in a slab, that's for sure. This is like a second year card of Griffey. I'll use some, some Goo Gone to, to take that, that stickiness off of there. But that's, thank you there, Blake. This is awesome. I will always remember where I got this from now. Thank you, Blake. Appreciate that. I never, I've never seen a CSA certified nine mint before. It's a different company, I guess, but they do have it registered with a number, one million one hundred two thousand three hundred and seventy-three. Does that mean they've slapped over one million cards? <laughs> Just curious. But that is an awesome Ken Griffey Jr. And it probably is a. They say it's a nine mint. I don't know if that's the name of their company or that's how they graded this, but this is awesome. I've never seen this grading company before. Let me put that right there for now in my display for a while. And Blake, I appreciate this. Appreciate this a lot. This is special. Two, three, four, five. These are awesome. And then we'll see. I'm going to just leave that Mariner down there for now. I, I can't see for sure who it is, but we'll find out when we get to the bottom of the box. So now for sure we've got our content. And then after that, um, of course, tomorrow will be our Throwback Thursday. We'll be doing our Throwback Thursday. And then uh, Cool Papa Bell, cool, cool, cop, cool Papa Bell, you can't really see him down here right now, but he is going to be our Hall of Famer for this Friday. We're going to be highlighting James Thomas Bell, Cool Papa Bell, for our Hall of Fame Friday, this Friday. And remember, this Saturday, I will not have you still in the chat, Bibster. I don't know. He said he was leaving, but he might have taken off. I know it's 3 o'clock his time, or let's see, 3 o'clock or 2 o'clock? No, I think he's East Coast time in Atlanta, as far as I know. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get ready to sign off. And uh, actually, I should leave that, my Seattle Mariner on top here that uh, Left Behind gave me. Put the Seattle Mariner, actually, yeah, scoops this over a little bit. Um, put this guy down here, the King Griffey Jr. slab, and then put the Seattle Mariner, Brett or uh, Bruce Bochy, right there. And we'll go ahead and end the stream with that in the screen. So this has been a fun day for sure. The Bipster of all things wax packed. I'm here. Okay, Robert was looking for you there, uh, Bipster. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready to sign off. This has been Donald Glomdahl, Hall of Fame Veterans, Sports Cards and Collectibles, being you this St. Patrick's Day, celebrating all the O'Briens and all the McNeils and all the O's and the M's at the beginning of their names. And the luck of the Irish can be with you today. Make sure you're wearing green or somebody might walk up to you and pinch you. But they're not going to pinch me because I'm wearing green today. <laughs> all right. So you all have a uh, great, great day. Okay. All right. I'm going to call you. No problem. So you all take care. Have a wonderful and blessed day. And as Bipster says at the end of all his streams, be blessed. Bye for now. Take care. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. sharp. Bye for now.